Hi everyone, it's good to be here. Hope you're enjoying your studies of economics. So we'll be going over the tutorial questions. I'll have a go at some of them and Emma will come and help you with the rest. Okay, so let's look at the tutorial questions for week two. The first question says, the number of owners of mobile phones has grown rapidly. And hence, the demand for mobile phones has also grown rapidly. Yet, the prices of mobile phones have fallen. Why? Now, this is interesting. So, let's consider the law of demand. The law of demand states that when prices go up, quantity demanded goes down. And conversely, when prices fall, the quantity demanded goes up usually for normal goods. Conversely, the law of supply states that when prices go up, suppliers will want to supply more of those goods and services because they can cover their costs better, make more profit. And when prices go down, suppliers usually supply less of those goods and services. So here we have an interesting case where the number of mobile phones have grown rapidly. Okay, Demand has grown rapidly, yet prices have fallen. So we understand that if prices fall, demand will go up. But why do we have more supply of it as well? Well, to answer this question, you need to think holistically. Think about it in terms of what happens in the real world, which is what economics does anyway. So the first reason why we have uh, more mobile phones but reduced prices is because the cost of manufacturing mobile phones has reduced drastically. Okay, So it's now cheaper to manufacture a mobile phone. Um, and also, in terms of technology, we have better technology, which makes it more cost efficient to manufacture mobile phones. And then the second thing you have to consider is we have more competition. So you have more manufacturers manufacturing mobile phones. Think about Apple, Google, Huawei, Nokia, okay, you name it. We have more manufacturers manufacturing mobile phones. Uh, Samsung, for instance. Um, so that's your question one. Now let's move on to question two. Question two states, this question is concerned with the supply of oil for central heating. In each case, consider whether there is a movement along the supply curve and in which direction or a shift in it, whether left or right. So we know what our supply curve looks like, right? It's an upward sloping curve. I'll just draw one here so you know what we're talking about. You have your price. You have your quantity, your supply curve is usually an upward sloping curve, and your demand curve is usually a downward sloping curve. So you usually have equilibrium when, where supply and demand meet. Okay? So here we have supply curves, and we're supposed to look at what happens to uh, the supply curve for the supply of oil for central heating. Right, so the first Question 2a says we have new oil fields start up in production. So you have new oil fields that start up in production. So what happens to the supply curve? Okay, so here we have it here. I've just drawn this here for 2a. So that's our price, that's our quantity. Okay, that's our supply curve in period one, S1. That's our demand curve. And then here we have equilibrium where supply and demand meet. But now we have new oil fill startup production. Now, nothing has been said about price. It just says we have new oil fills. So what does this mean? It means we have more supply of this um, oil for central heating. So we're going to have a shift in the supply curve to the right. And this is going to be our new supply curve, S2. And we can see our new equilibrium is here. Okay, where S2 meets E1. So here we are going to be. All right, question 2B. I've solved this here. It says the demand for central heating rises. Okay, so demand of central heating rises. So we have our price, we have our quantity. Okay, and that's our supply curve, S1. That's our demand curve, D1, in period one. And then suddenly we have more demand for central heating, okay? Nothing about price, just more demand. Means we have a shift in demand to the right, okay? So now that we have more demand, shift in demand to the right to D2, we're going to move our supply curve from here, 
from where we are, we're going to have a movement along the supply curve to this new equilibrium point, S1, D2, right here on the curve. There you have it. Question 2C, it says the price of gas falls. Okay, now you have to think about this in terms of the relationship of gas and oil for central heating. Okay, so now that we have um, the price of gas falling, it means more people would demand for gas. Okay, less people would demand for oil for central heating and will have more demand for gas because they're substitute goods. So you use one or the other. So there'll be more of a preference for gas over oil. So what will you have? If this is our cup for um, oil, so this is the supply of oil, this is demand for oil, D1. Now that more people are demanding gas and less people are demanding oil, we're going to have a reduction in the demand of oil to here, D2. So the graph, um, your demand curve is going to shift to the left and here we're going to have this new equilibrium point where S1 meets D2. So we're going to have a movement down the supply curve for a supply of central heating oil. Then we have question 2D. All companies anticipate an upsurge in demand for central heating oil. So what do you have here? So that's our price, that's our quantity once again. So that's our supply in period one, S1, over here. We have our demand in period one for oil. But now what do you have? You have oil companies anticipate an upsurge in demand for central heating oil. So if they anticipate more demand later, they can make money off that. If more people are demanding for that in the future, they can jack up prices. So for now, what will they do? They'll hold on in this period. They'll supply less in this period. So our supply curve is going to shift from S1 to S2. So this is going to be our new supply curve, S2. Okay, And we're going to have a shift in supply from S1 to S2. So this is going to be our new supply curve. Okay, because you're going to hold on supply for now. So our supply is going to be less in this period. So we're going to move to S2, and this will be our new supply curve. Fantastic. Okay, let's move on, shall we? So we have 2E. So we have demand for petrol rising. So demand for petrol is rising. So this is 2E over here. Okay, so that's our price, that's our quantity. This is supply in period one, S1. This is demand in period one, D1. And then we have supply, um, or um, demand for petrol is rising. So if the demand for petrol is rising, what should happen in order for suppliers to profit from this? It means they have to supply more petrol. Now, we need petrol to make oil okay that means that we'll have more petrol and of course we'll have more oil okay so what will happen is our supply of central heated oil would increase okay as a result of this demand for petrol not demand for central oil so the demand for central oil we haven't been told anything about that so we'll keep that constant but we know that demand for petrol is rising so we'll have an increase in supply of petrol. And because we've had an increase in supply of petrol, and petrol is also used to make central oil heating, we'll also have an increase in supply of um, central oil uh, for heating. So we're gonna have this here, our new supply curve. We're gonna move from S1, shift to the right, and we're gonna move um, to this new equilibrium point where S2, our new equilibrium supply curve for central oil heating, meets D1. The demand for central oil heating. So we're going to have this here. Okay, so we're going to have S2, D1. This is going to be our new equilibrium point. Fantastic. Then we have 2F. We say new technology decreases the cost of refining oil. So this is fantastic, right? And this is like what we said about the technology for mobile phones. So think about what happens in the market. So you have your supply. Okay. And you have your demand for that product. In this case, it's oil for central heating. 
okay? And we say we have new technology, and this new technology reduces the demand, I'm sorry, decreases the cost of oil refining. So what does that mean? It means at the same price, with the same cost, we can have more supply. Supply of um, oil will increase. So we're gonna have a movement from S1 to S2. Okay, so we're gonna have a shift in supply from S1 to S2. So with new technology, we're gonna have to be able to produce more. Okay, at the same price, we'll have more quantity. All right, so we have a shift from S1 to S2, and this would be our new equilibrium point. Fantastic. And then finally, 2G says all, all oil products become more expensive. All oil products become more expensive. So what does that mean? So look at it. It's very simple, right? So this is our supply curve. That's our demand curve. And we're saying all oil products become more expensive. So we're simply going to have a movement along the supply curve because now we're talking about price. Things have become more expensive, all right? So we're gonna have a movement along the supply curve. So that's it for now. It might take a while for you to get your head around it, okay? It is tricky, even for me, okay? So um, just practice and you will get it. So Emma's gonna come up now and solve this, okay? Emma, you're gonna have to maybe clean this one, I don't yeah. know. All right, there you go, yes. Right, so we are moving on to the question number three, which states the weekly demand and supply schedules for t-shirts and millions in free market are as follows. So we have the table given to us um, with prices and then quantities demanded and quantities supply. So we have price, quantity demanded, and then quantities supply. Okay, um, so the question A is, what is the equilibrium price and quantity? So from your lectures, you have learned that um, the equilibrium in the market is achieved when quantity supplied is equal quantity demanded. So we should just cons consult our table to see where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. And as we can see, it comes when the quantities both supplied and demanded are 12. So the equilibrium of quantity supply and demand is 12, and we should just look at what price is charged for when quantity supplied and demanded are 12. So the price is equal to five pounds. So that is our equilibrium. Um, the second question under B, States, assume the changes in fashion cause the demand for t-shirts to rise by 4 billion at each price. What will be the new equilibrium price and quantity? And has equilibrium quantity risen as much as the rise in demand? Explain, explain why or, or why not? So what this question is saying is that the demand for t-shirts increased at each price for 4 million. So we should produce the new table here, where prices will stay the same, quantity supplied will stay the same, but quantity demanded will increase by four at each price level.
So our quantity supplied stay the same because the question doesn't specify anything about quantity supply. Um, so we are just going to rewrite that row. Whereas our quantity is demanded increased by four at every price. So for every value of quantity demanded in the first table, we are going to add four. So in the first case, we have quantity demanded of 10. In the second case, 12. In the third case, 14. Then 16, 18, 20, 22, and finally 24. So the, the question then asks us, what is the new equilibrium price and quantity? So in the same way as in the question A, we are just looking at the um, at where quantities demanded and quantities supplied are equal. Now it's at 14 million units because the table is expressed in million. So our quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded and it's 14. And then price at 14 million units is six pounds. So the equilibrium price is six pounds. Um, So um, then the next question states, now plot the data in the, in the table on the graph and mark the equilibrium. Also plot the new data corresponding to B and mark the new equilibrium. So now we are just going to plot this on a chart, both of our tables and mark our equilibriums. Okay, so we have quantities supplied and quantity demanded both on our x-axis and we have prices on our y-axis. Um, we have quantity demanded and quantity supplied going up to 24, so we should mark that on the graph. Um, so in the first case, um, we have when the price is eight, quantity demanded is six. So when the price is eight, quantity demanded is six. Then we have if the price is seven, quantity demanded is eight. We have this. If the price is six, quantity demanded is ten. Um, if the price is 5, quantity demanded is 12. If the price is 3, if the price is 4, quantity demanded is 14. If the price is 3, quantity demanded is 16. If the price is 2, quantity demanded is 18. And finally, if the price is one, quantity demanded is 20. And there is our demand curve. And as expected, the demand curve is the downward sloping one. Um, so in terms of quantity supplied, when uh, the price is eight, quantity supplied is 18. So if the price is eight, quantity supplied is 18. If the price is 7, quantity supplied is, um, six, is 16. If the price is 6, quantity supplied is 14. 
if the price is five quantity supply is 12, so it's on the demand line. Um, if the price is four quantity supply is 10. Um, so I should have some error here. If the price is three, then quantity supplied is eight. So here, if the price is two, quantity supplied is six. And then if the price is one, our quantity supplied is four. So as expected, again, our supply curve is upward sloping. And our equilibrium is where quantity supplied and quantity demand would meet, as we showed under the question A. So the quantity is 12 and the price is 5. Now, we should also draw the demand and supply schedule under the question, um, under the question B. So our quantity supplied remained exactly the same because we didn't get any information whether that changed. Um, quantities demanded, however, for each price increased by four, so we should expect to see a shift in the demand curve. So our new quantities for the price of eight, our new quantity is 10. Quantity demanded is 10, so that will be the point here. If the price is seven, then our quantity demanded is 12. So it should be here. If the price is six, our quantity demanded is 14. So it should be here. If the price is uh, five, our quantity demanded is 16. Here. If the price is four, our quantity demanded is 18. If the price is three, our quantity demanded is 20. And if the price is two, our quantity demanded is 22. And finally, if the price is one, our quantity demanded is 24. So we have a new demand curve. We can mark this curve as B2 and the previous curve as B1 and our supply curve stay the same. So we experienced a shift in demand curve as the result of increased quantity demanded. Our new equilibrium is where our new demand curve, so B2 and our initial supply curve cross. So we have quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied, both which are 14, and our price in that case is six, which we can see on our y-axis, so it's six pounds. So that will be the task three, and these are all the tasks for our second week of tutorials. See you next time.